France and his non-creature strategy. Creator Monsters Esper Approach is where we're going to start things off here in round number three from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. If you are just joining us, thank you for doing so. Cedric Phillips, Patrick Sullivan, we are here in the booth. Nick Miller, of course, in the sideboard, celebrating his 100th show, everybody. Congratulations to Nick. 100th. Yep. Yeah, 100th show slash open. I got to get the technical term right. I got to ask him. This is 100th open, perhaps. In the business, we just call them shows. Yeah. <laughs> We've done so many of these darn things. I do want to know my count. I don't know. I'm kind of scared to know. I was thinking about it. I was trying to do the math when I saw Nick post what he what he posted about his 100th show. Mm -hmm. I would be surprised if I had done 200 just because of the number of weekends that have existed over the last five years. There's only so many. Yeah. But 150, 175. I think I'm like around 150. If we that's count not, the old, if we count the old format of opens as like each like when we had two no, that's, opens that's per weekend. No, that's one. Let's call weekends. Let's just call them weekends. Call them weekends. There's no yeah. way we've done 150 of these things. Are you sure? Uh, no. Are you sure? No, I'm not sure. Because we did 75 in two years. Ah, jeez, that's true. That's true. I forgot about that. That's a lot. Uh, cast out, gonna be cycled. Sensor took care of Pia Nalar. Scrap heap scrounge for the draw here for Decandio. Do I have something cycling related on mine, or is that you? That's on me. I already got that. Okay. Thanks. Take what I can get. Brennan, I'm going to play a mountain, and here's a Jade Light Ranger. A card that we're going to see a lot of here. Heart of Kirin for the Explorer. That's one counter, at least. But where... Does Mr. DeCandio want to put it? He'll put it in the bin. Next one. Mountain to the grip. 3-2 there on the Jade Light Ranger. And we're going to go over to Todd France. It's nice. Get a 3-2 for your trouble. Burn through a draw step you don't want. Draw a land. Mm -hmm. It's a good card. Looks like Todd France drew a copy of Baffling End. That's a new one that DeCandio is taking a look at. And if we can take a look at Baffling End, we will too. As France will miss land drop number four. Ronus the Indomitable to draw there for Brennan DeCandio. Baffling and a card we're going to see a lot of here, I think, in this format. When Baffling enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls with a converted mana cost three or less. When Baffling and leaves the battlefield, target opponent creates a 3 3 green dinosaur creature token with trample. To note, when you kill the Baffling End, you don't get your creature back, mm -hmm. it's just gone forever. Okay. That is an interesting. We see that hook so much mm -hmm. on the white removal spells. I just. I just assumed it was there without even reading. That's interesting. I learned that yesterday during dinner. Okay. Yeah. So that Jade Light Ranger that's underneath the Baffling End, I'd be thinking if I kill the Baffling End, I get my Jade Light Ranger back. Wrong. Wrong. You do not. You get a 3-3 Dinosaur. Here's Ronus the Indomitable. A card that might be picking up in play. Oh, Ooh. boy. You cannot cast this off, no, no, my no, friend. No, 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 no. You only have a single blue, Todd French. You cannot cast this off. That would be a really good time to cast Fumigate or Settle the Wreckage. Yeah. Even though he's been missing a lot of land drops and such, uh, Francis' position here is not that bad with Settle and Fumigate. If he has Settle or Fumigate, it looks like he does have Settle in hand. However, Brendan Nicandio is no dummy. No. And we all know that these approach decks play Settle the Wreckage. Everybody knows it. It is the front card of Todd Francis' hand. So how many creatures will Brendan Nicandio attack with? That's the question. Because it is clear as day that it is in hand. And so decandio has got some real thinking to do about what creatures he wants to attack with. And that's why you see this turn taking a little bit longer than normal. He'll attack with these two, leave Glorybringer back. There is Settle the Wreckage. So away go Ronus, away go Scrap Heap Scrounger. A couple of basics will be entering the battlefield here in just a moment. Sharp sequencing there, although unfortunately, you know, you've the settle, the exile effect is lined up against an indestructible god and your scrounger, mm -hmm. not the best. Let's see if the follow up is here for DeCandio. Free reign to do whatever he wants on this turn as Francis tapped out. You see in his hand, he does have a new one from Rivals of Ixalan and a Rekindling Phoenix. 
previewed by Jeremy Knoll on Split Second earlier this month as we head back over to a Top France. A sweet design. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Top France cards are going everywhere. He's got a card in his lap, potentially on the ground now. So he's going to pick that up. Perhaps a little nervous in the future match here. It's okay. It happens to everybody. That'll go on top of the deck. That'll be the draw step for the turn. There we are. It is an irrigated farmland. A lot of these lands actually enter the battlefield tap for Esper approach. These fast lands. Yeah, it's tough because you kind of want the lands that you don't mind on turns one and two playing them tapped, but uh, it's four, five, six, seven where you really feel it. And their lands are tapped four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. the, the cycling lands always enter the battlefield tapped. And then your concealed courtyards are doing the same thing. Decandio's done a pretty nice job of making Fumigate look pretty bad right now. So here is Fumigate. It's going to kill exactly one Glory Bringer. And Tato gained a little bit of life, sure, but that's not all that exciting. And you see, it's part of the appeal of Ronus now. Yeah, well, the hope here from Francis is he just doesn't have a follow up play to turn Ronus on. Well, he does in Rekindling Phoenix. All right. Well, the, well that's bad then. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the hope. Well, then, then, you know. And then he has a profane procession in hand, but I, I, I would imagine he's trying to get to a spot where he's playing it on eight. Doing it all in one turn. Sure, sure. He's a little bit behind on the table here. France down eight. Picked up a copy of Approaches. Does he have land seven? He has two Approaches in hand. I mean, he's been missing land drops. I'd be surprised. Yeah. Fatal push in hand. That one's going to be not great. You see part of the appeal of playing black in this deck? You get Fatal Push. Mm -hmm. You get Profane Procession. I'm sure other cards on the sideboard when we get to it. And you see some of the downside, which is these lands. Yeah, you know, you, you get the fatal push for efficiency, but you pay it back with the lands you got to play with. Mm -hmm. There is Profane Procession. Pass the turn back, Will Todd. He's not even representing Cell of the Wreckage at this point. Yep. Magma spray the draw there for Decandio. Yeah, I think Brennan is free to just attack with everything. No real fear. There's a fatal push which gets to kill, what, a token? Sure. Yeah, pump it up with Ronis, and that is going to take care of game number one. So Brennan to Candio, going to win game number one here over Todd France. Green, red monsters. Up a game here over Esper Approach. We also have Ryan Kirk with blue, red gift storm. Up a game over Jeskai Control. And then our Grixis Delver Mirror there between Tan and Grace and Joe Gross. They are still appears to be in game number one. So when we have an update there, we will certainly let you know. And as these players go to the sideboard here, we'll be coming to that in just a moment. But before that, a few words from our sponsors.
We are back and ready here for game number two between Brennan DeCandy and Todd France. It's Green Red Monsters, Esper Approach. DeCandy up a game here with his innovative Green Red Monsters deck, so hopefully we'll have a deck tech with him later on this weekend in the sideboard with Nick Miller. For now, though, let's take a look at Esper Approach's sideboard. Start with three Regal Caracal, three Negate, two Lost Legacy, two Duress, two the Scarab God, and Argul's Blood Fast, Ixalan's Binding, and Adjacent Defeat. Patrick, what do you like and why? Uh, well, if they're in the sideboard here, I would imagine the creatures are supposed to be coming, the Scarab God and the Regal Caracal, although those are for the typically smaller creature decks. It's possible those enter the battlefield and just aren't impactful enough. Other side of things here for DeCandio. Three Chandra Defeat, three Chandra Torture Defiance, two Death Gorge Scavenger, two Sweltering Suns, two Naturalized, two Struggle Survive, and a Dire Fleet Daredevil, the new Pyro. So I think the, the Chandra Torture Defiance and the Dire Fleet Daredevil seem pretty solid for the matchup. Uh, the Death Gorge Scavenger may come up if he just has so many dead cards that he needs to cut. Okay. Well, those are the options there for both players. It looks like Todd France is going to take a mulligan while DeCandio De going to keep his hand both players consulting with their teammates before making their decisions. So you see the team aspect of things coming into play. How do you feel about Esper approaching its ability to mulligan? Uh, it's, there isn't a ton of card drawing, mm -hmm. and um, you need to get a lot to a lot of mana. I mean, a mulligan's okay in so far as you have like a dead weight advantage that's implied. It, you know, as particularly game one, your opponents also are typically mulliganing to six or five in essence, but uh, the deck is mana hungry and isn't that heavy on ways to recoup cards. Well, as we see Todd France take another mulligan here, we will take a moment to learn a little bit more about Brennan DeCandio before game number two is underway. 27-year-old from Long Island, New York, with seven open top eights, two open wins. Has a complete set of Dragon Ball Z series and watches it once a year. Big Chipotle fan. That sponsorship deal is going to go to me, Brennan, not you. And self-proclaimed catchphrase master, which, well, we'll see about that. Are you uh, a big catchphrase player? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We will see about that at some point, I am sure. Brandon Canio, also an innovator in standard formats. I will give him that. Um, he's always brewing and brings a lot of good decks to the table. If you're looking for standard innovation, this is one of the players I would certainly recommend going to is you're going to see a sensor be cycled off a hub. Got to say this. This is another cost of the Esper, uh, the Esper approach strategy. Yeah. Either hub plus one mana cyclers is a tough way to get off the ground. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because now Todd France is on energy. There's a Merfolk Branch Walker trigger. The Explorer to J-Light Ranger. Pretty good magic card. But it's going to go to the graveyard. Fatal Push going to take care of Merfolk Branch Walker. Todd France going to untap very quickly. Take his third turn. Picked up a copy of Settle the Wreckage. It might be time to cycle that cast out, my friend. And they will cycle the cast out. Hiya! Not a land. Let's go back over to Brendan DeCandio. As we're all tied up in our modern match there, take a look at that scoreboard. Harlan Fear. Tie things up against Ryan Kirk. Jeskai Control, Blue Red Gift Storm. They're going to go to game number three. Joe Gross up a game in the Grixis Del Vermeer over the Tannen Grace. As we turn our attention back over to Brennan DeCandio and Todd France. DeCandio, he's got a Pia and going to come in here. No third land, no blue mana. That's a Chandra. We might be done here in a moment. Elevator going up. Top card. That's a Dire Fleet Daredevil. Two damage can be dealt to Todd France. DeCandio coming to Todd France two separate ways. Now he's got creatures. And he's got a Planeswalker. Fumigate the draw. That's no good as we head back over to DeCandio. Going to make short work of this one, I think, Patrick, and put his team up a match. Yes. No additional context provided. Get him a raise as here comes an <laughs> attack for three. Chandra going to go up. Looks like for red sorry, mana. Sorry. The mixture of his battlefield okay, there along we go. with France's uh, struggles to make his land drops mm -hmm. on time, mm -hmm. I think is giving DeCandio a substantial advantage. That's better. That's better That's for our, We work our way through the second game of this match. <laughs> How's that? There we go. That'll help our new viewers at sorry, home. Sorry. I just need, you know, it takes me a little while to get into the swing of things. It's okay. We're still working our advantage bar. So once we get that up, we'll have a better idea of who's winning. The top card is a... Scrap Peep Scrounger, here's an attack. We're all set. Brendan DeCandio going to win. Get, still had all these. Still Brendan had <laughs> all yeah. of these. Brendan DeCandio going to win game number two <laughs> and the match here over Todd France, putting his team in the lead as a team of Grace, Fear, and DeCandio. You would not believe how good my hand was. Uh, the team of Grace, Fear, and DeCandio will win the first match here over Gross, Kirk, and France as Todd France's deck did not really cooperate with him. 
Uh, we're going to move it over to, to the Delver Mirror here in just a moment. Joe Gross currently up a game over Tan and Grace as those players are just working their well, working their way, excuse me, in a game number two. But I know that Approach was your pick for the weekend and not a great look for Approach there in those particular games. But at the same time, I think you probably would have leaned maybe towards Blue White Approach as opposed to Esper. Yeah, I, I just don't think. I, I, so this deck doesn't trigger a revolt very easily. So if you're playing, it, it's just for destroy a creature cost two or less, and with there being so little enchantment removal, you could just baffle again if you really wanted to do it that bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I, but to me, it's just more of an issue of, I, I think the the mana base is so much worse, and I don't think Fatal Push is appreciably better than other options you have afforded to you. It's Wasteland time! Oh, it's been so long! <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long! Years! Years, I believe. <laughs> a couple of copies of Gataxian Probe in the grave right there for Joe oh, Gross. Oh, yeah. yeah I, forgot. I forgot. I yeah. forgot. <laughs> oh, right on time. There's that. Hold on. Let's <laughs> check my board here. I don't know if I don't know if you have a Wasteland activation on your board. I'm really hoping not. No. Thank goodness. Wasteland going to go after a volcanic island. <laughs> now Tanning getting to contemplate if he wants to cast his own spell and daze it. Yes. Yes. Gonna, let, gonna let it go. Yes. <laughs> gonna let it go, it appears. Tannen with a polluted delta. Looks like he's resolved a couple copies of Gataxian Probe and Cantrips himself as we're working ourselves into uh, the early stages of the mid game here. Each player having a land. For now. Yeah, no guarantee of that. Yeah, Tannen with a wasteland of his own. Yep. And if you want to play your big threatel threat to a daze, one way to push that through is to leave your opponent with no islands. Also, the Wasteland's a card in the graveyard. That's true. For Delph considerations. Yes, here is Probe. Tana going to pay two life. Looks a little bit different than our standard match we just watched. Lay out the hand. Force of Will brainstorm. Oh, no lands in that one. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. <laughs> true name nemesis. Right. Gurmag Angler, a lightning bolt, and a fork bolt. I got a sense about what next turn's going <laughs> to look, look like. You get to daze the Force of Will. Wasteland and play your Gurmag Angler or what have you. Grace will draw a new card. Another, oh, yeah. yes. Another Wasteland. Yes. Yeah. Okay, a tough road to hoe here mm. for, for Joe Gross. Mm. Yeah. There's a, I'm going to kill that. That's gone now. Right. Did and, you need that? And now All here's right. Gurmag. Please, Hagler. bingo. Uh, What's your bingo here? Uh, Dell five or more oh, cards. Oh, come on. All right. <laughs> One step closer here for Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> here comes Force of Will. gets dazed. Grace in a pretty pretty good spot. Joe Gross knows he's in some trouble. Hand mm -hmm. on head there in the yeah. back. Let's let's pull the lens back. <laughs> let's just breathe all this in. <laughs> Which blue card? It'll be Trinity Nemesis. Pretty far away from casting that one. Yeah. There's there's our days. And this is how Magic was meant to be played. A 5-5 versus a 1-1, one, one, no lands on the battlefield. This is great. That's what I'm talking about. Get that true name out of the graveyard. That yeah, should be exiled. We'll, we'll fix that. That true name Nemesis needs to be exiled from the graveyard. There we go. They took care of it. Delver checking, ponder, flipping. Yeah, too much mana, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a one-way highway. Yeah, in for is. three. Gross. Gross with so many expensive spells in his hand right now, like mm -hmm. Ponder and Fork Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> in, in for five. <laughs> Comes Grace. Uh, Gross going to fall down at ten. Uh, Grace with the Delver of Secrets now. Uh, We're going to go back over to Joe. He's looking for a land. He drew, oh, he, that looked like it was a spell. It looked like a spell. Yeah, big mistake there I from Joe. I can't wait for Worcester in a few months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Worcester, Worcester in March is going to be a delight. That'll be a legacy hope. We hope to see you there. Here's a wasteland. Here's an attack. Let him know about it. Yep. Gross going to fall down to four. Grace, I think, has a fatal push in hand. To, you know. Just has it all? Just whatever. Shit. That's a, a dismember. dismember. Yeah, it's all the same. Well, dismember's a little bit riskier to cast, because if you actually do it and then it gets countered, so you get bolted out. I don't know. There's no reason to do anything. He doesn't, yeah, he doesn't need to make a move. He doesn't need to do any. It's really low risk, but, you know. As uh, Gross has drawn a red card, it appears. Yeah. Some sort of blast effect. That's dead. Tan and Grace going to play dismember. And we're all set. It's Tan and Grace. Joe Gross. <laughs> Dan and Grace and his mana <laughs> able to take game number two. <laughs>
Uh, good to have Wasteland back on camera. It's great. Yeah. I can't. I can't wait. It's, what is it? Like six weeks away? Seven weeks away? It's the first week of March. It's actually. It's actually my birthday weekend. Can't wait. Yeah. Oh, that's the, what a way to celebrate. Yeah, that's it. right. I'm. My birthday is the Friday of that week. I'll be flying from Seattle to, to Worcester. Yeah. The Worcester Mass, and then covering a Legacy Open with you. Should be a lot of fun watching people's lands get blown up. We get to have more of that in just a moment, but first, <laughs> a message from our sponsors. We are back, getting ready for game number three between Tan and Grace and Joe Gross. Grix is Del Vermeer, or a little Wasteland Mania, Love perhaps. It. Uh, we already have one match in the books. It's Brendan Cando. He won his match against Todd France pretty easily. Greenwood Monsters destroyed Esper Approach. And then in the middle, if we have time to jump that way, we will. It's Harlan Fear and Ryan Kirk. It's Jess Guy Control and Blue Earth Giftstorm in the modern seat. Well, we're going to turn our attention back here, potentially, to legacy. Again, if Harlan wins, the match is over. However, if Ryan Kirk wins, then we play on. Good to see legacy back on camera, though. Everything yeah, in small it's doses, right? It's been, exactly. The taxi and probe, my friends. It's an underground sea, a volcanic island, wasteland, lightning bolt, fork bolt, ponder, Delver secrets. That's the hand there for Grace. Gross getting a good look at that as he falls down to 18. Noteworthy here that uh, Tannen will be able to cast at least two cards this game. True. That is true. <laughs> Misty Rainforest will search up a volcanic island. Let's see what the follow-up is here for Joe Gross. As he's at 17 now. That's a Delver of Secrets. Pass that turn back. You want to fork bolt him or blow up that lamb? <laughs> uh, typically, the strategy in the Delver Mirror matches is to not wasteland when you are on the draw, and certainly don't wasteland when you are behind on the table. There can be exceptions to these rules, but I think that's what you're going to want to do. One and one with the fork bolt. One and one. See if this resolves. All right, that works. 
Gross going to fall down to 60. Back to Joe Gross. We're going to go. What is, what a, is Tannen's count here for lands that actually produce mana? Because he's drawn quite a few fetch lands, but these decks can run out. For Mr. Grace, let's see here. He's got three Volcanics, two Underground Seas, a Trop. For, I, if you want to count Wasteland, you can. I really wouldn't. No, not for these purposes. So yeah. six fetchable lands in the deck? Yes. It's Gross. a ponder for Joe Gross. The aptly named. <laughs> he's not sure. Yep, he's got to go back in the go back in the tank. Got to ponder. Ponder this. should just be a picture of a tank. Right. I've got that for for the next art. I've got it all figured out. Just a big picture of a tank. He's gonna keep it. Happy with what he's found. Well, he's happy enough. There's an underground. Excuse me. Yeah, it's an underground. See, a little rusty on the legacy. Here's Delver. Pass that turn back. Let's go over to Tannen Grace. He'll draw a card. There's a red one. Not that rusty. So it's Young Pyromancer. Good so card. So I guess the the issue here from Grace is do I just bolt and maybe cast the Ponder? Do I try to hold some of my spells best for the Young Pyromancer and try to do it next turn? Do I just wasteland this person because yeah. they have mana? Yeah, bolt plus wasteland. Have you considered that strategy? I... Kind of, I kind of, I kind of like it. Though, he, though the opponent did just resolve a ponder, bang! There you go. Take care of the underground. See, let's keep moving here. Joe Gross, Misty Rainforest has brainstorm in hand. Has lightning bolt. It's Delph number three. Yeah, it looks like his hand. Quick, quick graveyard check. Hand is good enough here that he doesn't want to brainstorm just yet. Mm -hmm. Wants to wait until he's got some garbage to throw away. How many cars over there? Three. Yeah, three. Fear and Grace teaming up. Pretty important pot for both of them. I like Grace holding back this fetch land. The fetch land is a lot of insurance against getting wastelanded because you can get either an underground sea or a volcanic with it. Mm -hmm. If you commit it to the table, and then shuffle it away, it's much easier to cut you off with one color of mana. Grace has various red cards to hand upon her and a flooded strand. I think those are pyroblasts. Looks that way. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, just got them in the board. Force of Will is the reveal. And Delver has now transformed. Uh, speaking of which, card transforms. Ship it! Ship it to the bingo board. You have card transforms? I sure do. I have card from Rivals of Ixalan transforms. Ah, you got screwed. One of those may be harder than the other. Bolt going to take care of Delver of Secrets. For Tan and Grace, we'll draw a new card. Looks like Gurmag Angler may have been picked up. Wouldn't surprise me if he tried to shove that through with Pyroblast back up here. Mm -hmm. Knows about the force of will, of course. It's not trivial to make this call because the Flooded Strand is, is such powerful insurance against Wasteland. Now, if he breaks it, he has to pick between getting another Underground Sea or getting a Volcanic Island, and it's possible to get cut off. Earlier in the match, uh, Esper Approach did settle the wreckage two creatures. Oh, that's, yes. that's, another, that's another hit for me as well. Really starting to rack up the bingo board points here. Hashtag Team Cedric, by the way, for all you fans. You're on the right team right now. Here is a young Pyromancer. Force of Will with a Brainstorm will resolve. And now here's Grimag Angler, whole graveyard. Woo. And some of the deck, too. Woo. Delving some of the deck Swoo. away, too. Easy, easy. Easy. So there's a 5-5, five five, the real big fish. Back to Joe Gross. He'll draw. In with the insect elaboration in a moment. Continue, please. Uh, Gross made a, a, a judgment call there that did not uh, work out the right way. Uh, it looks like Harlan Fear may have won. 
Hence yes. the handshake. There, there it is. The and for what it's worth, I think Tan and Grace was probably going to win. Yeah. See both players kind of looking at the top cards of their deck. Young Power Mancer was going to come down. Uh, Grace, I think, had a brainstorm. Joe Gross had a insect operation, a spell pierce, and a wasteland. None of those particularly S good right now. Some mixture of still had all these alongside would have still had all of these. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what is taking place here. As the team of Grace, Fear, and Decandio will beat Gross, Kirk, and Franz. So congratulations to Tan and Harlan and Brennan as they are going to move on to 3-0 and here in Dallas. Good start. These, turn these team tournaments are tough, too. I mean, these are, you know, 7-2 and two cuts typically and no buys helping any of the competitors. So it is, I've played in a few of these, and it's a grind. Important to get off to a good start. I think we watched Modern last round, right? Briefly? We did. Yes, we what was watched. The match? Humans versus Jeskai Control.